This section is intended to give a brief overview on the basic markdown syntax elements. The only difference to common markdown at this point is that you can define meta information such as author, language, voice, etc. with an HTML comment at the beginning of every document. We will describe all of these elements in more detail in section macros. All of these macros start with a single word, which is followed by a colon. If you require more space, like for comment or link, you can use multiple lines, but every following line has to start with an indentation. The meta information from your document is later shown within the information section as well as within the home section. If you already know Markdown, then you can skip most of the content in this section. However, there are some slight differences that will be marked with a trailing star at the section title. A course is structured as any other Markdown document with starting hashtags, whereby the number of hashtags is used to define the hierarchy of your document. Every section is presented separately. In contrast to most Markdown parses, Lia script applies a two-step approach. Sections are parsed at first, which means that the parses searches for patterns as depicted below. Parsing the content of a section is quite time-consuming. That is why the section content gets only analyzed. If this specific section should be displayed to the user. However, this happens only at the first appearance. Afterwards the resulting view is restored from a local cache. There might be some cases where you want to add further headings. We therefore apply the following syntax with underlining, equal signs, or minuses. In common markdown, this alternative syntax is applied to define level 1 and level 2 headings. We use it to create headings that are one level equals or two levels dash below the main heading. However, these subsections will not be part of the table of contents. And since their interpretation is slightly different to common markdown, it should be avoided. How would you separate paragraphs or other content elements from each other? If you only have a typewriter, the easiest way is a spatial separation, and in Markdown this is done via an empty line. Thus, whenever you have blocks such as paragraphs, enumerations, or tables, it is common practice to separate them via a new line. This makes it easier for you to edit and structure your course, and it prevents the interpreter from too much work. How does text highlighting work in a text file and thus within a paragraph? Well, Markdown defines some basic characters that can be used to surround a word or a collection of words. We try to use the GitHub-flavored Markdown style for simple formatting. Thus simply use multiple stars or underscores to mark certain parts of a text. We define some additions to common Markdown, such as underline and superscript, which can be defined with the following syntax. As you can see from the examples, you can combine the nest all elements freely. If you want to use stars, hashtags, or other syntax elements within your document without applying their functionality, then you can escape or in other words indicate them with a starting backslash. If you want to escape a backslash, you will have to write two subsequent backslashes. But you do not have to use it. If there is only one star within a line, this will be interpreted as a single character. So you will have to apply this kind of escaping only to prevent misunderstandings between you and the interpreter. One thing that we missed in standard markdown was an implementation for arrows. The verbatim text shows how arrows are defined in our markdown implementation with their result on the right. But you can also use some basic smileys. We will try to extend this partial support in the future. However, since Lia script accepts Unicode, you can also copy and paste any kind of character including emojis.
There are two ways of adding links to a Markdown document. Either by inlining the URL directly or you can name it, as shown in Listing 2, comma, by applying the typical brackets and parenthesis notation. The optional information is put in double quotes at the end of the URL. This optional information is used as a title attribute, and it is shown when the user hovers the link with the mouse. Lear script has an advanced preview link that will load the remote course and pass the meta information such as title, version, comment, logo, email, tags, form your main HTML comment at the top of your document. To do this, you will have to use preview LIA as the title of your link, which is followed by the raw URL of your course document. You can use this technique also to create previews for other courses on your personal website or for other GitHub projects, as it was described in section projects. For more information follow the link. Sometimes it might be required to have both. A link and a visual representation of it as and QR codes. Similar to previews, you simply name your link. QR code. You can add further information to your link by adding a title. Markdown is also allowed within the link title. In case of an image or media link, the title will be used as a subtitle and displayed accordingly. Images are defined similar to links, but they are indicated with a starting exclamation mark. The name of the link or the alt text is not wasted, since it is not displayed anymore. Instead, it is displayed if the image cannot be loaded for some reasons and it is used by screen readers to give visually impaired people a hint of what will be visible on the image. So please, don't leave it empty. The URL can be either relative to your markdown document or it can be absolute, which means it is pointing to an external resource. The optional title in Lear script is not only used as a title attribute, Instead, it is used as a real subtitle for all media links. Note that Lear script is smart enough to scale your images to the optimal size. If your image is smaller than the current maximal applicable width, it is shown in full size. If it is larger, then it is scaled to fit in width and also in height. You can further click on all images to open them as modal and if the image is quite large, such as Leonardo's painting, then you can also zoom and inspect it by hovering with the mouse or thumb. Additionally, if you start a paragraph with an image, Lear script expects it to be a floating object, which is depicted with a maximal size of 50% of your viewport if it is not smaller than that. How would you interpret a paragraph full of images? We thought that the only reasonable depiction of this could be a gallery. And we like this idea. You can click on every image and inspect it also with the zooming feature. If an exclamation mark indicates visual content, why not using a question mark to indicate auditive content? Opening parenthesis. From our perspective it resembles an ear. Everything is similar to images and the URLs can be either relative or absolute. <coughs> Additionally, you can also directly reference music from the SoundCloud website. The associated song will be automatically embedded for you. Images are marked with a starting exclamation mark before the link. Audio by a starting question mark and movies are made of images and sound. That is why you combine both marks. Question mark. Dot. Defining resources this way shows at least the links correctly in other markdown parses or on GitHub. There is baked-in support for YouTube, Vimeo and TeachTube.
which means that you only have to include the link and the resource will be embedded appropriately. Dot. If it is something else that you want to embed something else from another website, then you should try out the link syntax with two starting question marks. This means LearScript will try to use the AO embed service, which is offered by a couple of websites. If this succeeds, this will embed only a specific part. If it fails, then LearScript will at least try to embed the website via an iframe. What you have seen previously with images is also possible with any kind of multimedia link. Simply put everything into one paragraph and LearScript will automatically generate a gallery for you.